about to dive into a new verse this morning in Ephesians 4.10, but before we begin our Bible study, we're going to allow a few moments of silent time where you can pray and represent yourself before the throne of grace. It's a time to use the rebound technique if needed, which is 1 John 1, nine. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So let's bow our heads together for just a few moments and I'll finish us out in a group prayer. We're headed into a new verse this morning. I'm going to read it in my new King James Version. Then we're going to exegete it and look at, look at a doctrine. Ephesians 4.10 He who descended is also the one who ascended far above all the heavens that he may fill all things. I've got an exegesis here on PowerPoint. Let me go back up. So Ephesians 3.10 is real simple exegesis, except for one word, which we're going to have to look at. Let's take a look at it in the original. He that descended. It's the aorist active participle of katabeno. It contemplates the descent into the lower parts of the earth in its entirety. It includes the fact that he was in paradise, that he made a visit to Tartarus, as per 1 Peter 3.18. The active voice, Jesus Christ, produced the action of the verb after his physical death on the cross. He was a trichotomous being at the point of his death. His body went into the grave, Luke 23, 53. His spirit went into the presence of the Father, Luke 23, 46. And his soul descended into the inner or lower parts of the earth. Psalm 16.10, Luke 23.43, Acts 2.27. By the way, you would never know any of this were it not for the Word of God. It is only revealed in the Scripture. And uh, these are some of the gems and jewels that are only available to believers willing to study the Word of God. Next phrase is, is the present active indicative of Imi to state an absolute and dogmatic fact. The same as the intensive pronoun altos. And it should be translated the same person also. That means there's no changing of identities. That means Jesus didn't change personalities or identities when he died physically or in his trichotomy, he did not change persons. He is the same Jesus, exactly the same person. That ascended up is the aorist active participle ana bano, far above all the heavens. The adverb here for far above is uper. Uper rano, pas oranos, oranos is the word for heavenlies or heavens. It's a prep uh, prepositional phrase which describes the route of the triumphal procession. So here we have Jesus Christ emptying out paradise and actually transferring paradise into the throne room or the third heaven. The next phrase, that, is hina plus the subjunctive mood. It introduces a purpose clause that he might fill is the aorist active subjunctive of the verb pleroo. All things is the accusative 
direct object with the definite article pos. It's in the neuter gender. It refers to the blessings of super grace or to sharing God's happiness. So we have a translation. We only have one word that I didn't explain, and that's pleroo, and that's what we're going to spend some time on. The one having descended, remember that's not only into paradise, but into Tartarus, is the same person. He never changed, even though he has died physically. He's the same Jesus Christ. Also, the one having ascended in a triumphal procession, emptying out paradise, distributing myth, m gifts to the church age believers right into the third heaven in order that he might fill up the deficiency with a certain quality of the all things. I want to remind you of a verse in John 16, 7. John 16, 7, Jesus says uh, that the disciples were concerned that he was leaving. And if you, you remember in John 14, he says, let not your right lobe be troubled. Because they were, they were having a little distress after uh, he says, I'm leaving. I'm, I'm going to the cross and then I'm leaving. They were in somewhat distress. And then in John 16, 7, he says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. For I'm communicating to you a Bible doctrine, aletheia. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper, the Parakletos, will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. In other words, the triumphal procession and the entrance into the third heaven is what instituted or instigated the church age where every believer would receive God the Holy Spirit. So this is part of Pleroo. So let's look at the doctrine of Pleroo. It says that Jesus is going to fill all things. Word fill is play roo. The first thing we need to look at is the historical meaning of the word play roo, and it means to fill up, just generally. Uh, it was used in. Uh, the context of filling a ship with sailors. Pleroo meant for the sailors to board the ship and to fill it up, to take possession of the ship. Um, and so Pleroo uh, is going to have four different parts of its definition and I want to give those to you now the first part of the definition of pleroo means to fill up a deficiency to fill up a deficiency and we all can as even as believers we have deficiencies as unbelievers we have Deficiencies. Part A under deficiency. The deficiency in our lives is having no ability to understand spiritual phenomena. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and 3. God tells us even though we're born again, you're going to have problems. 
1 Corinthians 3, 1, it says, And I, brethren, that means born-again believers, family of God, could not speak or could not communicate to you as spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you're not able to receive it. Couldn't digest it. Even now you're still not able, for you are still carnal. So the believers at Corinth were born again, they were headed to heaven, but they could not digest the meat of the word. They were in carnality. Milk was the only thing they could handle. There's also somebody else who can't absorb Bible doctrine. And it says, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, Verse 14, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. That means he's an unbeliever, and he cannot receive them, because they are spiritually discerned. So that brings up the last guy, the spiritual man. The spiritual man can absorb doctrine. So we have a deficiency in our lives, having no ability to understand spiritual phenomena as an unbeliever or as a carnal believer. The teaching ministry of the Spirit fills up the deficiency of knowledge with the content of mystery doctrine of the church age, our ignorance of doctrine. I love Thomas Sowell. He's a black conservative. He is uh, uh, he's an analyst, but he's a, uh, gosh, I forget, economist. Thank you. Black economist. And he absolutely roasts leftism. One of his uh, sayings, I hate to quote, I can't quote it exactly, but he, he, uh, he says, you must go quite a ways in your education to find out how much you don't know. And uh, I think we all kind of start out that way in the Christian way of life. They say, oh, I'm born again. I'm headed to heaven. I've got the rosy glow of salvation. And uh, man, everything's great. And then you come into Bible class and you hit a brick wall, first of all, with vocabulary because you can't understand anything because it's a different vocabulary, a spiritual vocabulary that you must develop. And then you got concentration problems. You can't, you can't sit still. You can't concentrate. You can't sit through a Bible class. You got all kinds of problems. Well, you've got to bear down and you've got to dig in and you've got to get settled down and start at the bottom and work your way up and it it takes quite a ways of just sitting in Bible class to realize that, hey, this is a long haul. This is not a sprint. This is a marathon. And I'm going to have to buckle down and I'm going to have to keep on learning because, uh, hey, I've got a long way to go and there's only one way to the top. That's to dig in your heels and stay with it. Well, here's what you'll find out. God the Holy Spirit is there to fill up that deficiency. We're all, we all come into the Christian way of life the same way with a goose egg. No spiritual phenomena. You may be moral. You may know the Ten Commandments. You may know the Bible stories. But you cannot absorb the spiritual information of the Word of God until you're born again and understand how to reside in the bottom circle then you can go up
And uh, plero o means that God is going to fill up a deficiency in your life. Bible doctrine. I want to go back to this and I want to put a, a period on this. We're living in a time. We're living in a time in the world where everything is in disarray. And what our past lives that we knew as normal is gone. And now we see, we thought that the American way of life was being able to have a, a, an occupation, a job, and being able to work you know, your, your, your time, you know, a normal work week, and go home and be with your loved ones and enjoy your weekends. And, but that type of normal is now gone. And a, you'll find out that a guy that believes he ought to go and work for 40, 50, 60, 80, 100 hours a week, whatever it is, he believes he ought to work, and then be able to enjoy his home and his family and uh, possibly even attend church. That's not the normal American life now. It's not normal. And if you went down the road and you began to interview even males of each household, you would find that there is, let, there is a small, much smaller percentage now of men in their household who are working a normal career, a normal vocation, and then they're uh, spending time with their families in the off time, which we thought was a normal way of life. What does it mean? It means that America is devolving. Is devolving. What is it devolving into? Well, we have been on the road called socialism for a while. And that is the unequal taxation and so-called redistribution of wealth. They never divide it. It always gets ate up by the big machine. And finally, we're right on the brink of losing all freedom in America. Well, Americans are about to find out that prosperity didn't come from free stuff. Prosperity came from men in overhauls who were willing to build this country by the sweat of their brow to work, to fight, many of them did, and to build. And we've been riding on the coattails of the previous generation, for sure. But what does all this mean? We've got a crop of Americans that are deficient. They really don't know what a prosperous life is or from whence it cometh. And we're just about to find out how, how deeply impoverished the human souls are in America. If you think they're unhappy now, wait until they're standing in a soup line. Wait until you have something they want. Wait until, see. Americans are deficient. They're deficient in truth. Pleroo means that God has enabled us to learn the truth. What part of the equation is missing? You see, the want to. I am deficient. I am deficient in my soul. I need something. Where do I get it? Where does it come from? It comes from the Word of God. And God is about to place a value on His Word that we've never seen before. People are about to suffer like they've never seen before. And they're going to be looking for answers. Looking for answers. And that's where our ministry comes in. 
because we happen to specialize in the Word of God, not in Halloween parties and passing out stuff and the fall foliage tour and pottery class. Guess what? Grace Bible Church has the answer. To fill up a deficiency, part one. Part two, play ro'o means to fully possess. Under the filling of the Spirit, inside the bottom circle, it means the Holy Spirit fully possesses the soul of the believer rather than the sin nature. Now be careful because God never controls you. You have your own volition. To be possessed of the Spirit doesn't mean that you're a robot. Ephesians 5.18 is a perfect example of the believer being possessed of the Spirit. It says, and do not be drunk with wine, which is dissipation, but be filled by means of the Spirit or in the Spirit of the Spirit. So the power for the execution of the protocol plan of God is the filling of the Spirit. This is good news because God doesn't use weak human strength. The outside pressures of prosperity and adversity create stress in the soul, which is tantamount to the sin nature influencing the soul. All of my uh, contemporaries, all the young men my age, are distracted right now by prosperity. And uh, right now the deer are frolicking in the woods and the candy machine of the forest are dropping their candies for the deer. The, the white oak tree, it drops the little sugar ball candies for the deer and they're all crowded around under the white oak forest and they're frolicking and chasing one another and having a great old time and it's the fall of the year and all of my friends are out in the woods and there's one day uh, one Sunday morning a week where we study doctrine together and then one Wednesday night and uh, all of my friends are distracted now, some of them may be online, but uh, they're distracted by prosperity. The prosperity, it's freedom. Freedom to be able to go and to enjoy the outdoors and to go to deer camp and what have you. Well, and they say, well, if Walmart shuts down, I'll just live out of the woods. Well, the truth is that happened before and the deer were gone in short order. As a matter of fact, that the deer that we have in Arkansas, a lot of them were transplanted from up north because during the Depression, the deer were hunted to extinction in Arkansas. So what is the answer? It's a whole lot better to use your discipline and serve God and learn doctrine during prosperity than it is for him to shake your tree with adversity so that you say, well, I better get back to Bible class now that I'm almost dead or whatever. So uh, we are either fully possessed by the filling of the Spirit or by the sin nature. The filling of the Holy Spirit inside the operational type divine dinosphere means that the Holy Spirit is the influencer of the soul. Under being fully possessed by the 
spirit point C, you must have both the place and the power to execute God's plan. The place is the bottom circle or the divine dinosphere. The power is God the Holy Spirit. So the filling of the Spirit is an absolute. You're either 100% filled or you're not. The believer must be fully possessed by the Holy Spirit and do Bible doctrine before he can be fully possessed by the blessings of maturity. I've seen it so many times. God sometimes pours out material and financial blessings on believers to curse them. Some of the most miserable people I know are rich. They've got they've got way more than they can actually manage and it drives them crazy absolutely drives them nutty and I've seen God use that as a switch in the life of so many believers and they have no idea that God may have just blessed them with that so that they they may have the spiritual gift of giving and they may have this gift that allows them to make finances that are just falls in their lap somehow miraculously so that they can support ministry. But they don't know why they have it and therefore they're miserable. They try to hoard it up. And so it's amazing how God punishes believers through divine discipline sometimes when they get out in the Thule's. Well, guess what? When you have doctrine, you can be like Paul. I have learned how to be content whether I have much or I have little, is what he says in Philippians. He could sit in prison and eat a crumb of toast and be perfectly happy, or he could sit at a table with a king and have a steak and be perfectly happy. He was content in all things. That's what doctrine will do for you. The third meaning of pleroo, it means to fill with a certain quality. So it says in our verse, Jesus ascended so that he could fill all things. We're looking at what it means. The filling of the Holy Spirit inside the operational type divine dinosphere, that's the bottom circle, provides the use of God's power, divine omnipotence. The enabling power of the Spirit instead of the use of human power and ability. God, the Holy Spirit, and Bible doctrine are the highest quality with which the believer can be filled. I love uh, Psalm 119. I want to read a, a little bit of it. The value of doctrine is really the concept. Blessed are the undefiled in the way. That means they operate clean from the priesthood. Who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies. Who seek him with the whole right lobe. They also do no iniquity. They walk in His ways. You have commanded us to keep your precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep your statutes. Then I would not be ashamed when I look into all your commandments. I will praise you with uprightness of heart. When I learn your righteous judgments... I will keep your statutes. Oh, do not forsake me utterly. How can a young man cleanse his way? By, by taking heed according to your word. 
With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts. I will contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things from your law. I am a stranger in the earth. Do not hide your commandments from me. Well, he goes on. And uh, he talks about, I, I want to go uh, over to Psalm 119, 103. It says, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts, precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Anyway, Psalm 119 is a great one when you want to look at the value of Bible doctrine in the soul of the believer and uh, the quality of God the Holy Spirit and Bible doctrine are the highest quality that a believer can be filled with. Pleroo. The fourth meaning of the word pleroo means to fully influence. The filling of the Holy Spirit inside the divine dinosphere promotes, provides motivation for a consistent post-salvation epistemological rehabilitation. That means getting your head screwed on straight. And the execution of the protocol plan of God. The believer is fully influenced by God the Holy Spirit when filled with the Spirit. He is also fully influenced by Bible doctrine as a mature believer. So he can have capacity for blessing. So the spiritual baby Christian manifests Jesus Christ in his life differently than the mature believer. So a baby believer is over here, and even though he's in the bottom circle, he's spiritual, he's still a baby. He's frail. Now the point is, is to grow up where you can stand on your own two feet spiritually, and not only that, so that you know who you are in Christ Jesus. You know who you are. It's important to get to that place. Especially for young Christians. And so what we want is to spend a maximum amount of time in Bible class learning as young believers, as immature believers, until we can get to the point where we know who we are in Christ and we can stand on our own two feet spiritually. And when you get to that point in your life, God the Holy Spirit can influence you in your ways, see, in your life. Now, see, he's going to fulfill a sevenfold ministry, and one very important aspect of that is that he lead, guides, and directs you. Here's what's so amazing God's plan may include you dumping over the money changers' tables, killing Goliath with a smooth stone as a shepherd. 
it may include you taking the nails from a Roman and praying for them. See, which one is it? Are you going to turn over the money changers table in righteous indignation? Or are you going to take the nails from the Roman and pray for him? Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Which one is it? Because it could be either one in any given situation. Which one do you do? Do you take the nails? Do you flip the table? God the Holy Spirit will lead, guide, and direct you in God's plan for your life so that you know that you know that you know which one you are supposed to do. Flip the table or take the nail. See, who's influencing your life? That's the question. If you're influenced by the sin nature, now see what happens here. If you're a salty character, all you're going to do is flip tables and you'll never take the nails. But if you happen to be sweetness and light, you're just going to take all the nails and you're never going to flip the table. See, who's influencing your life? The sin nature or God the Holy Spirit? And that's why you've got to grow up to the point where you know who you are in Christ and you can stand on your own two feet spiritually. Now God the Holy Spirit can lead, guide, and direct your life and you know what to do at any given time. Fully influenced by God the Holy Spirit. Now, in the Bible, we have nine different uses of the word pleroo. We're going to look at some different scriptures where the uh, word is actually used. There's nine different times where it's used that we're going to look at. Nine different ways. And the first way, or point A, one out of nine. Play role is used for the function of gap. That means the grace apparatus for perception. That's you learning doctrine, gate four. The erection of the edification complex of the soul. Leading to the super grace life. The Lord Jesus Christ did it by the time he was 12 in Luke 2.40. I always think about what I would do if I had my knowledge now and I could go back in time. Obviously, I'd buy Walmart stock and Microsoft stock and and bet on Secretariat. Anybody would do that, I think. But what would you do with your spiritual life is the question. How would you how would you play that game differently? See if you had it to do over. And I I think that I would uh, have tried to convince my parents to send me down to Baraka, down to Houston, and I would have sat in the Colonel's church while he was still alive. And there were some the great men that were a part of that church. And um, there there's nothing better than sitting face to face with that kind of teaching. And uh, we all know it. And so I think that uh, had it to do over, that's what I would have done. Uh, And obviously I would have had a a military career also. But the truth is, we have the Lord's life here. And it says in Luke 2.40, what did he do with his young life? He knew uh, what was going to happen. He, He had contemplated God's plan for his life from eternity past. So what did he do with his life is the question. In Luke 2.40, we get the answer. It says, And the child grew and became strong in the Spirit. 
filled, that's the word, plero, with wisdom, kokma, or uh, sophia, that is Bible doctrine. And the grace of God was upon him. That means he had entered the super grace life. So from an early age, he was not distracted by social life or playing with his peers or what have you. Maybe there was some of that along with it. I'm sure there was. But the effort was to gain the high ground of spiritual maturity early on. And in his humanity, he had to learn doctrine, just as you and I. So he did so. Also, uh, for the church age believer in Ephesians 3.19, 10, that's our verse, and Colossians 1.9, we've had Ephesians 3.19, it says, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. Remember, we had the life beyond gnosis. That you may be filled with the fullness of God. That's the content. It's the character of Christ. Colossians 1.9. It says, for this reason, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. What did he pray for? And to ask that you may be filled, that's the word play, roo, with the knowledge of his will, in all wisdom, that's Sophia, Bible doctrine, and spiritual understanding, that sunasis, that means norms and standards in the conscience. So, here you're going to be filled, and that means growing up into the super grace life. The second use of the word, play row o, is used for the believer, influenced by the indwelling of the Spirit, Ephesians 5.18. And it's contrasted whether you're influenced by alcohol or the drinking of wine, which is dissipation, which it means the wasted life, the prodigal life, the outlaw life. Or influenced by the Spirit, which is the life God intended for you. The third way it's used is used for the fulfillment of the law through the filling of the Spirit. Romans 8.4 And uh, if you didn't know Romans 8.4 it's how the West was won. I love this verse and um, It says that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. And there's not too many... You, there's the absolutes of the spiritual life. You're either in the flesh or in the Spirit. There they are, even in the English. It does mean that the moral aspects of the law are fulfilled in the life of the spiritual Christian. That means that, you know, thou shalt do no murder. Well, the spiritual man doesn't have a problem with that. Don't steal, don't lie. You know, you don't have a problem with that. The moral aspects of the law are fulfilled. It goes on and says that we're no longer under the law. but under the Spirit. And it's a good thing because the law says you can't even touch a hog. No pork, no bacon, no sausage for you. It don't, don't even be around them if you're a Jew under the law. You can't even do that. You can't be in the midst of them. Well, if you didn't know it, the West was won on bacon grease and 
You couldn't even get started in a wagon to go out of town until you greased your axles with some lard. By golly, you had a bucket of lard hanging off the back of that thing. And every once in a while, you had to stop and grease those axles or you were going to run that thing off. And if you rode through the rain, you had your trusty, uh, probably 1875 Winchester lever action. And uh, that thing was made out of nice blued steel. And if you didn't stop and clean that thing and put a little hog lard down the barrel, they'd run a patch down the barrel with the lard, keep that bore clean and shiny and rub the metal down, you'd have yourself just a rusty piece of equipment. It wasn't going to work. And the same thing with your Colt revolver, 45. It's not going to stay around unless you rub that thing down with some hog lard to sitting around the campfire at night. Not only that, back then they shot paper patch bullets. And uh, guess what they put on the patch? Hog lard, lubricant. And when you loaded your uh, ammunition, they had little bands around the base of the bullet. And guess what went in those bands to lubricate that lead as it went down the board? Hog lard. To shoot the Indians with, to shoot the deer with, to catch dinner and kill snakes and everything else. Well, the believer who thought he was under the law couldn't even get started out of town. Because he can't even touch a hog, can't be around it. His conscience would be terrified at the fact that he had to grease an axle with hog lard. But when he came through the New Testament and he saw, you're no longer under the law, but under the Spirit, guess what? Freedom. Freedom to go win the West. And we did it. The fourth way in which Pleroo is used. It's used for the analogy of right man, right woman. For the body of Christ being fulfilled in Christ. In Colossians 2.10 and Ephesians 1.23. Christ is the last Adam. And uh, what's funny about that is the fact that he built Eve and presented her to Adam, Bo, the first wedding. He, by now, he built her perfectly. And then he presented her, Bo, he conducted the first wet wedding service. And uh, Eve, Eve was presented to Adam, and Adam exclaimed with excitement, finally. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. I shall call her woman. Well, Jesus Christ was the last Adam, but he had no Eve. And therefore, God the Father intercalated the church age to form a new royal family to complement not only Jesus Christ's third royal patent, but his title as the last Adam. God the Father made him a wife. By now he built the church. And so we're the perfect complement to Jesus Christ. Okay, we'll take a break right there and we'll come back to the doctrine of play roo and finish this dude out.
The holidays are here, and it's time to treat yourself at Torrid. Whether you're looking for sparkly or cozy, Torrid has it all for the holidays and beyond. All designed to fit sizes 10 to 30 perfectly. So refresh your wardrobe from head to toe with our sexy lingerie, the perfect dress for any occasion, our most loved bombshell jeans, and the comfiest wide-width boots ever. And save 50% off during our pre-Black Friday sale happening now at your local Torrid store and online at Torrid.com. The Home Depot is here to make your residential and commercial paint jobs easier than ever. With dedicated Bear Pro rep support, convenient job site delivery, custom color matching, and job order history at any location, the Home Depot has the services pros need to get the job done better, faster, and on budget. Plus, you'll earn Pro Extra paint rewards with every purchase and save up to 20% on high-quality bare paints, stains, and primers. The Home Depot. How doers get more done. U.S. only. See store for details. man of God might be matured, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Study to show thyself an approved workman unto God who needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We're looking at nine different ways the word pleroo is used in Scripture. And uh, we've just seen that uh, it's used for right man, right woman, the church related to Christ. Point E or 5, it's used for the pastor communicating doctrine to his right congregation. Colossians 1.25 Paul says, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill, that's the word play role, the word of God. And I'm so thankful for you all uh, in support of the ministry and the teaching of the word. Uh, we'll never know our impact um, until we get to Bema. And uh, here's what's crazy. It, 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 things happen behind the scenes that you don't understand. Last time I went to the Philippines, I had those thumb drives. And everyone I passed out on the street, I made them promise me. I said, I'm giving you this free under one condition. You have to share it. You cannot keep it for yourself. You have to share it. Pass it around. Get it into as many hands as you can. And just in the past couple of months, I, I've, I've got a Facebook page, Pastor Brad West, and I just post some doctrines on there. And, and you could go through and study for quite a while from the doctrines that I post out there and a few videos. But people from all around the Philippines have begun to like that page. I have no idea who they are. I haven't searched out. But every day, somebody new is going out there and hitting that page. And they're, they're hitting like, and they're following that page. And some of them are going out there and finding those doctrines or those videos. And they're listening to them. And they're sharing them or they're liking that page. And I guarantee you, it's from that thumb drive getting passed around for free. We'll never know the far-reaching consequences of this little bitty ministry until we get to be my friend you won't know it 
And you say, well, there's not too many people there. But it doesn't matter. You don't need a lot of people. You need the right people. And so, I want to thank you for being my congregation and allowing me to fulfill my spiritual gift. And not only that, the responsibility to spread the Word of God. A beautiful thing. Point F, that would be six. Sixth different way. Word play ro is used in Philippians 4.18. It's used for the believer priest giving whereby the pastor's financial security is established through his own congregation, thus freeing him to study and teach. Philippians 4.18. Paul says, indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, plero, having received from Epaphroditus the thing sent from you, like a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And obviously, the ministry can't run without money, and I want to thank all of you who are able to give. And even those who can, I want to thank you for your prayers and thank you for your support. Remember, God never judges on a dollar amount. He judges the intent under grace giving. And therefore, you could have more reward for wanting to give and not having than you could for having and giving. Point G, it's used for the production of divine good from super grace. Philippians 1.11. Revelation 3.2. Philippians 1.11 says, Being filled, plero, with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. I love that because Jesus talks about in John 15 the fruits of the vine. You can produce nothing of me. It's almost like Paul was there. He wasn't. He got the same message. In Revelation 3 2, John says, Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. He's saying you've got to uh, be alert and aware. So it's used for divine good production. Point H, it is used for the top floor of the edification complex of the soul leading to the super grace life. 1 John 1, 4 and Philippians 4, 4. Remember the top floor is occupation with Christ. John 1 4. He says, And these things we write or communicate to you that your joy may be full. Play roho, sharing the happiness of God. Philippians 4 4. It says, Rejoice in the Lord's always. And again, I say, Rejoice. So you can be filled with God's happiness. Play Roho. Point I, it's used for the mature believer receiving the blessings of super grace from God as per Ephesians 3.19.
So wonderfully, it is a uh, the super grace blessings come from God, and while some of these blessings may be material and real and visible, there's also spiritual blessings, including those in your periphery, historical impact. The blessings of dying grace and the blessings of unde undeserved suffering. Well, we have to come back to our verse, and I want to. Uh, give you the three applications of pleuroo to our verse. It means it. we're going to pick up three of those meanings in our verse exactly. It says that He ascended that He may fill all things. What does it mean? What does it mean when it says He ascended? that He may fill all things. It means, first of all, to fully possess. Without Jesus Christ ascended into the heavenlies, He could not have he started Operation Footstool. He could not have sent God the Holy Spirit. And we could not possess the super grace blessings designed for us in eternity past. In other words, were it not for the ascension, there would be no super grace blessing. But because of the ascension, there is. Remember that God's plan is like a great wheel. It must keep rolling. There's nothing that can stop it. And Jesus says, in fact, it is better for you that I do go away. God's plan can continue on. And He is going to send down blessing and prosperity that you never even dreamed of. Secondly, it means to fill up a deficiency. Jesus ascended, and He is filling all things, and He is filling the deficiency. The believer's deficiency after salvation is super grace status. Occupation with Christ and super grace capacity, super grace blessing. Remember, without the ascension of Christ, he wouldn't even have you wouldn't even have gotten started because remember, upon the ascension was the initial distribution of spiritual gifts, including apostleship. And where did the New Testament come from? Who recorded it? Who recorded the epistles? The apostles. And therefore, you wouldn't even have the substance of your own spiritual growth were it not for the New Testament epistles. You get it? He had to ascend. He had to go through the heavenlies to fill up the deficiency in your own soul. And the third meaning of pleuroo means to fill up with a certain quality. The super grace believer is filled with the highest quality of spiritual and material things. The aorist tense of the verb is a constantive aorist, and it contemplates the action of the super grace believer in its entirety. So the beauty of the super grace life is that God can bless you even with material possessions and it does not distract the believer from the purpose for his existence. And whether that is gaining the high ground of spiritual maturity or simply the maintenance of spiritual maturity, the believer knows every day a little more truth is what it takes. A little touch up, a little refresher, a little brush up here and there every day.
half of you, if you if God gave you a million dollars, you'd say, so long, God, I'll see you in eternity. The super grace believer could get a million dollars and he'd think about what he was going to do in ministry with it. And he might buy a steak and a potato too. Okay? So there's nothing saying that we're not going to get to enjoy the blessings that God pours out on us in time. The point is it doesn't result in a distraction to the spiritual life for the mature believer. So there are the three ideas of pleuroo. Jesus ascended into the heavenlies. He took the throne room. He was seated at the right hand of God the Father. And these are the results. He is filling all things with a certain quality to fill up a deficiency and to fully possess. So let's put a cap on it. Him filling all things, it takes up the super grace status from the point of entry into the Christian life to the attainment of super grace. The active voice, Christ after the ascension, is represented as producing the action of the verb. It is the Lord Jesus Christ who has unlocked the door to super grace living and blessings for each believer. The subjunctive mood is a reminder that super grace is not automatic. The potential subjunctive indicates the fact that while super grace blessings were designed in eternity past and provided, at the present moment the Lord Jesus Christ is tapping his foot, waiting to give us these things. It is only provided for those who reach super grace status. And this demands consistent positive volition towards Bible doctrine. The potential does not become a reality until the believer gaps it all the way to the top. Well, the question for you, I think, today is, if you had $10 million in your lap, would you say, so long, God, I'll see you in eternity? And you've answered your own question, really. If you say, I wouldn't miss Bible class, I don't care what my bank account says. You've answered correctly. You know the source of blessing. The source of prosperity is your relationship with God. And God makes love to us through Bible doctrine. Who would want to miss out on that love life? I wouldn't. It's the part I enjoy most about my week. is studying and teaching the Word of God with you. And so I know you feel the same way. <clears throat> and we certainly have been blessed because Jesus Christ has ascended and He is going to fill all things. Okay, I thank you for your attention and attendance this morning. We covered Ephesians 4.10.